We've spent the last few months staying at some phenomenal campsites all over the great state of Texas. We've stayed in North Texas, the coast of Texas, and then back up north again. It's now finally time for us to move on with our adventure. Next stop, New Mexico. Apparently we're not the only ones that have visited Roswell, New Mexico. Legend has it that some visitors from out of this world have made a pass through once or twice. We settled in a nice campsite on this reservoir right outside of Carlsbad, New Mexico. And this reservoir on the map showed that it was actually dried up, but as you can see here, there was still plenty of water. This was yet again a great campsite. We've been truly blessed to find some really phenomenal places to set up shop on our travels so far. I hope that trend continues. The views here were absolutely amazing, and really the only drawback here was the fact that it would oftentimes get pretty windy. The wind shook up our legs. <laughs> what do you call them? What are those actually called? Stabilizer jacks. Stabilizer jacks. Got it. Legs. Legs. Staying cute ain't easy on the road, is it, baby? <laughs> Takes a lot of work. <laughs> but look at a lot of extra work. Look at what you get to look at, though. Oh, I know. It's pretty. Except the bugs are starting to come out at me and might get stuck in my nails. <laughs> <laughs> Stuck in your nail polish? It might, yeah. I like this head get up. You want to explain to us what's going on here? It's a microfiber hair towel wrap. So that way you can just wrap it up real fast and use your towel for your body and it's less uh, rough on your hair. So it doesn't. So you're get not ripping it out? Basically. Yeah. Super, super soft. I dig it. Amazon. Link down in the description. <laughs> Do you, do you see the snow that's falling? My weather woman told me absolutely <laughs> nothing about... That's snow. I didn't Look know at, anything about snow. There's snow falling <laughs> on my pants. Well, what elevation are we at right now? But you said it was supposed to be 53. <laughs> Guys, holy cow. Today we're at Carlsbad Caverns. And uh, we're fixing to go check out some really cool underground shit. So let's roll. Carlsbad Caverns is tucked beneath the desert of southeastern New Mexico and is home to hundreds of caves. At about 750 feet below the surface of the Guadalupe Mountains is the largest cave chamber in the country known as the Big Room. The Big Room is so large that you can fit two U.S. Capitol buildings within it. And this is just one chamber in more than 100 caves located within the 70 square mile park. One of the more popular aspects of Carlsbad Caverns has got to be the massive colony of Brazilian free-tailed bats that call the cave home during the summertime. Every night during this time, you can see mass colonies of these bats spiral into the open air in search for food before coming back for shelter during the day. What an interesting sign, right? That's nuts. This is all under the damn mountain. So up there, bats um, fly out. That's where they spiral out from is right up there which is really cool we don't get to see it it's in like the uh midsummer she said can we interest you in some uh guana now i'm not a scientist but i'm going to try my best to give you guys a crash course on how these caves were formed research suggests that 260 to 265 million years ago this area of new mexico set on the western coast of the ancient continent of pangaea here a reef of sponges and algae grew along the edge of an inland sea as the reef grew upward and outward, it grew on top of old reef that had turned to limestone. And this growth eventually cut the sea off from the ocean and slowly evaporated, exposing the reef rock. When fresh water and brine mixed along the fractures in the rock, limestone developed which formed interconnected cavities. As the Guadalupe Mountains grew, a section of reef became exposed and caves began to form. Scientists believe that throughout time, chemical reactions and microbial processes formed a gypsum rind that repeatedly fell off and onto the floor, enlarging the cavities into the huge chambers found today. Drip by drip, slowly, over millions of years, the caverns developed the amazing formations that you see here. The caverns still continue to grow to this day like one big living organism. Scientists continue to study the caves, and many of them believe that the microbes in the caves can be used in antibiotics and medicines that could one day help fight current diseases. NASA researchers have actually begun studying the caves as they try to understand our universe. And it's crazy to think that still to this day, they're discovering new areas of this enormous cave system. If you really want to be blown away, research the Lechaguilla Cave located within the Carlsbad Cavern system. If this wasn't so far down, I'd legit set up my homestead right here. 
perfect weather. It's great. After cave exploring, it was off to explore another natural wonder of our world. So I'm out here looking for campsites, and uh, well, this is the road, but I don't know. I have a hard time getting through that. Yeah, if you can, just see if you can't spot me. Just make sure that... Tires go where the crust is? Tires go. Oh, yeah. We got that. <laughs> it's like four foot. That's the end of the road, boys. <laughs> All right. Well, in typical fashion, here we are yet again in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the dark, setting up the tent. Uh, we absolutely refuse to get to any site whenever there's daylight so we could actually see what we're doing, it seems like. But... Uh, this is it. So we actually found this place by accident. If you guys remember that little ditch that I showed you guys just a minute ago, well, there was a bypass off to the left. And as soon as I took the bypass, it kind of twisted us around and I immediately got off course and then stumbled upon this spot. It has a fire pit over here. And I said, well, rather than going and exploring any further in the middle of the dark, let's just camp here. Now, one thing I will highly recommend is never go traipsing through the desert or any place really, even with mapping software during the middle of the night. You could get off trail, you never wanna get off trail, but most importantly, it's unsafe, right? You could cut tires. Um, there's all kinds of different things that could happen during the nighttime, so I highly don't recommend that. But here we are, camp. And tomorrow we're going to White Sands and it's gonna be a good time. So I can't wait. We'll see you guys in the minata. Good morning and what's happening? Welcome to the middle of the desert. Absolutely nowhere. So we pulled up late last night. We didn't get a chance to see how beautiful this backdrop is gonna be, but man, just take a look at it, huh? That's awesome. We're getting everything packed up this morning. We didn't bring any food. This is just a quick trip. We're gonna go head into town, which is, uh, I don't know, Al Almagorda, I think, or Armageddon. I don't, I don't know what it's pronounced, but anyway, we're gonna go head into town here grab something to eat, and then we're gonna go visit the White Sands National Park, which is gonna be pretty epic from what I could see from the road last night as I was stopped in the Border Patrol checkpoint. So, should be pretty cool, so let's go. I tell you, last night was the first time I've ever had to use the guy lines uh, since using the Gazdell style tents, and man, it did great. We had mild winds, it was probably somewhere around 10 to 20 mile an hour gusts, but uh, yeah, I mean, the thing did fantastic. We just kept having to hear this rattling all night, which at one point kind of freaked me out. It sounded like a gang of people were running up on us, but man, it did uh, it did great. So as long as you guy line the sides down, you don't have to worry about high winds or anything like that in the gazelle. Also note the all-terrain stakes and the fact that, well, they're still straight, even after putting it down in the hard rocky surface of the New Mexico desert. Check that out, huh? White Sands National Monument. And uh, interesting note, no alcohol, but only through certain time periods. Also, do not try to collect any of this here sand. Collection of this here sand will result in up to six months in jail. Or $5,000 fine. Or $5,000 fine. To be honest with you, I'd probably just do the six months. I just paid $5,000. I would not want to be in a jail in New Mexico. Pumba, 
What do you think, buddy? What do you think about the White Sands? White Sands National Park in New Mexico has the world's largest concentration of white sands and covers over 275 square miles. These dunes are a byproduct of multiple different events traced back 250 million years ago. An interesting side note, a few years back, scientists found the world's largest known collection of fossilized footprints from the most recent ice age, which quickly prompted scientists to question when people actually originally inhabited North America. The sand dunes are made up of individual grains of two white minerals, gypsum and selenite, and as a result, the sands are cold to the touch even on hot days. I might also add they're extremely reflective. Very blinding. It's, it is blinding, and <laughs> it's can't overcast. See, like, you can't know. The sun's coming out now. You can't, you can't, you can't look at it. <laughs> <laughs> what I think is crazy about it is... beautiful. Yeah, it is beautiful, but what I think is crazy about it is the fact that it's so compact down. It's not like any other dunes that I've ever been on. But man, it's bright. I mean, you really cannot see shit. <laughs> it was time to head back to base camp, but we weren't done adventuring yet. So we decided that we would hop on the New Mexico backcountry discovery route for a bit. Before getting to camp, we had to make an important stop for Christy to pick up a tool that she wanted. What are you laughing at? What you got there? My clamp clamp. Your clamp clamp? Yeah, this what one you, was two dollars. What are you gonna do with that? I'll pick up trash. Well, you didn't get one for me too? Oh, you gonna do it with me? How selfish. The um, heavy duty metal one with the things on the end, $10. They're the same length, they do the same thing. <laughs> the other one does it better, I bet. It was around this time that I decided to remove the sway bars on Apple, so I took her out into the desert to see how she performed. Off-road, she performs fantastic. On-road, you can definitely tell that the sway bars aren't there, but it's not that bad. If you guys are interested, I'll make a dedicated video talking more about this. Just leave a comment down below. While out exploring, I found some really cool spots, so I decided to head back to camp and ask Christy out on a dinner date to watch the sunset on top of the mountain. I told Christy, out here we got full 5G, and this could be our view. And you know what she says? <laughs> what? What'd you call that? A big pile of dirt. <laughs> she says in what? Look at a big pile of dirt? <laughs> I know, we're looking at water and birds and prairie dogs and chipmunks and... You can probably see all that from here too not but water. not water mm -hmm. water's not here we're gonna go up there and head down. first though we just gotta climb up that i think i found the perfect spot to have dinner tonight and we're gonna watch the sun go down there in between those mountains So this is one of the times that a modular kitchen system really comes in handy because I can just take the kitchen out of the Forerunner here and place it anywhere that I want to in this little site that I've found, which is a really badass site to have dinner if I don't say so myself. One of the things that's synonymous with really, really pretty sites is, well, the weather conditions aren't always favorable. If you can tell right now, the wind's blowing quite hard and it's pretty gusty so by having a modular kitchen system i'm actually able to put it on the other side where the wind's not so bad if it was built into the back of the forerunner like some setups then i would be in the wind and there wouldn't really be anything i could do about it also i'd have to place the forerunner strategically in every spot that i decided to stop whereas with this setup i can put the forerunner in a spot and then set the kitchen up strategically where i need it by having everything in one box, then that means that I'm just able to grab this box and either put it in the Tundra or put it in the Forerunner, depending on what we decide that we want to take. And everything that I need is right there as far as the kitchen goes, as well as some other uh, camp stuff too.
I'm a soaker for things that have their own compartments and this Camp Chef cooking system is no different. It's got its own compartments. Everything fits nice and neat there in that little pouch and I really like that idea. The only thing I wish is that the wouldn't corrode as easy. As you can see, they've been heavily used and out here you don't always get to wash them right away. So yeah, they look like that after about two years of use. Today, I'm making chili taters. One of the hardest parts is camp cleanup. Let me show you a quick and easy way to get your pan back right. Now that it's heated back up, I've got some room temperature water. I'm gonna go ahead and splash on there and it's gonna sizzle up. And at the same time, I'm gonna clean it out with the spatula. You guys won't be able to see because I can't hold you and do that all at the same time. That's what it needs to look like when you pour the water on it though. All right, once you're done doing that, take you some paper towels, dry it out real good, and it's clean for the most part. And this is how it looks all set up. Now, I'm sure somebody's going to have something to say about the propane tank right there. It's been riding like that for five years. I'm not necessarily saying this is where you should keep yours, but it's been working for me. As you can see, it only takes up the right side. Over here, I still have room for all the activities and boom, including setting my bed up whenever it's time to go to sleep. Kick his ass out. Sleep outside, dog. Yeah, right. Y'all think he sleeps outside? One of the crazy things about where we're at is when fronts come through, uh, like cold fronts, warm fronts, stuff like that, they don't really present themselves here like they do in the southeast or in other places in forms of thunderstorms and rain showers, but here they present themselves more of, you know, wind events. So it's been windy all day. I'm kind of behind the camper right now as a wind break. And as you can see, that's the front. That's the actual front that's moving through the line of clouds there and that will go through Dallas Fort Worth area tomorrow and actually create havoc for them they're under some uh, pretty intense watches and different things like that but I just think it's crazy how that works out here and I'm glad because I don't really care to deal with the rain and thunderstorms what I'll tell you about out west is if you see these trees moving these little trees here and these trees here when you see those moving, that's how you know it's it's definitely windy because those trees are built to withstand these winds. So when they move, that means that it's uh it's pretty intense. We hadn't really been dealing with any real bad winds today. Somewhere between 10, maybe 20 mile an hour gust. Right now we're probably dealing with that same type thing. I think that the wind gusts are supposed to get up to maybe 40 miles an hour. Uh, but, you know, Imogene here has been handling wind like that for pretty much our whole trip since we hit Texas. All right, well, that's going to do it for this episode. Be sure to join us next time as we go through one of the windiest moves we've ever been through on our way to go see some petrified wood. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure that you hit that thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button to follow the adventures, ring the bell so that way you're notified when new videos come out. And until next time, you guys keep hanging in there like a hair on a biscuit. And remember, you can be happy if you've a mind to. Peace, y'all.